Uh, hello, good evening, everyone. Today we have with us Neha Gupta. She has recently given her uh, NET and JRF exam and has cleared both of them. Uh, congratulations, Neha, on clearing NET and JRF. So, Neha, we would like to understand your journey from the very beginning, you know, how you started and, uh, you know, what helped you prepare for NET and JRF? Okay, so hello everyone. Firstly, I think NET and JRF, it's nothing new for a student who has been studying economics for say three years, for bachelors, I, I would say that. So for NET and JRF, I didn't do any regressive preparation again. The regressive preparation that I did was for the master's course. So for master's entrance, whatever I have prepared, I just revised it and went to give my NET JRF. But a very important role that I must say the past years have played a very important role. So all I did was to skim through the past years to understand what type of questions actually UGC net asks. In economics, uh, if I co remember correctly, this year there were a million of questions or million, there were plenty questions that were centered around open macroeconomy. Okay. I'm doing a master's in trade and finance. So it was quite easy for me to, you know, understand the concepts and give the answers. So I think... Uh, understanding the pattern of the exam and also getting your basics right is the uh, key to clear UGC net. Nothing else, no rigorous preparation is actually required for that. Got it. So, um, Neha, one thing that uh, a lot of students were saying this time that this year's paper was difficult as compared to the papers that have been asked in the past. And it was also very mathematical as compared to yeah. papers asked in the uh, past. So is that true and how you coped up with that? Yes, it's actually very true. But, uh, you know, I'm not a very theoretical kind of person. Maths and econometrics is my uh, strong points. So hmm. for me, it actually worked uh, for the good. So usually all the past year's paper, you would see there are many questions regarding GDP percentages, you know, arranging them and you uh, some schemes also arranging them in the year of uh, their establishment. But this year, it was very mathematical. I could see some questions upon Bertrand, uh, Bertrand model also. So I think this mathematical portion actually helped me. And also for an economics, economics person, you should have a very strong hold of mathematics. So Got I would it. say it's a good change in UGC net uh, pattern. And I would request them to, you know, have some core mathematics and econometrics that would actually help the students. Mm. Got it. Got it. And also, um, you know, uh, there are some subjects uh, in the syllabus of UGC net, which are not there in other uh, entrance exam. For example, environmental economics or, right. you know, for example, they are, they have mentioned develop, development economics in much detail as compared to what we do in master's entrance exam. So should a student focus on environmental economics or development economics also as much as is written in the syllabus? Or is there a way to just skip that and still crack the exam? Okay, so what I would say that uh, time optimization is the key. So mm -hmm. as I already mentioned, go to the past years. You can, you know, you can center around those topics that are frequently asked in the exams. So I also went through the past years. I saw there were many topics that were getting repeated from environmental economics and development economics. So I focused on that topics as uh, only. And also, I am I have studied environmental and development uh, very regressively in my bachelor's. So it helped me to go Got through it. the questions easily. Got it. So uh, what about the books? Could one, like for example, in Delhi University, uh, as you are from DU, you would know, we follow, uh, you know, international authors. We, we used to follow Varian, Snyder. Right. And uh, when we talk about, uh, you know, preparing for NET, many people think that, uh, you should be following HL Aguja or Indian authors. So what, what approach should be taken? Should it be international authors only or should you focus on Indian authors? Okay, so I'm not sure about this answer. I didn't follow any book to be very specific. But what I think is that your bachelor's preparation, how you have spent those three years actually define what kind of preparation do you need for UGC net. So mm -hmm. let's say I was very engaged in my master's course while I was preparing for UGC net. I hardly get one hour, one week. So I just dedicate one hour, one week for that. And you will be surprised to know that uh, the date that UGC net paper was there after uh, 
you just in a paper one day there was a break and another day there was my semester exams okay. so i was very focusing on the semester exams because it actually affects my cgp right so i would say that don't take pressure on you know this is a national exam or anything like that you are a student of economics you know the basics you know how to crack entrance exam as you have been studying in a masters college hmm. so i would say that first of all believe in yourself that it's just another paper and secondly i would say that uh, you know just follow whatever you will be following in your bachelors you don't need to include new books in your uh, syllabus as you have yeah. a very time constraint with you mm. and any book that comforts you is the best book everything right. has the same content in another way or so right right and also is there any particular book one can follow just to practice the mcqs okay so the one book for paper one that i followed was by mm. arihant so okay. yeah i followed it for past years and that's it i think it's a good book it has plenty of topics if you need to go in more detail hmm. and that's the book you can rely on okay and uh, how difficult it is to understand part 1 of the syllabus okay so part 1 is very new for an economic student i would say but if you have some research background if you hmm. have done some research some written some paper you would understand i guess 40% of the questions they right. ask about research methodology and things like that and again you just i uh, what i did was i uh, solved a paper without any uh, new knowledge i just skimmed through the questions each question is regarding some topic i highlighted th- this topic and just studied that topic in i would okay. say like five lines what this topic signifies so if you have an idea like i remember there was uh, in paper 1 there is a question regarding gb and uh some terabyte and this question like that so yes, this is yes. not we know like exactly. but i know that there, there can be a possibility that this type of question is being asked so i just focused on the past year questions i understood that tb is that gb is that that's it and it. some type of smart work is required for paper one i would say hmm yes right i actually gave my net exam in i mean i cleared it in 2017 so since then a lot has changed but i still can say that these kind of questions were asked to us also right, right. on computers and on ai and i think that will be there forever so you need to know some part of some part. such topics also if you have a prior knowledge that this type of question is asked you don't you know get shocked in the middle of paper and lose your right. confidence so exactly. i would say losing your confidence or cool in the paper is a big issue than hmm. not knowing the answer right so uh, you know one thing i wanted to know when you sit for an exam how so this is a question every student wants to understand how much should you aim like how many questions you should be aiming to attempt correctly that will make sure that you will clear the exam okay so actually this is the question that i asked my uh, you know uh, fellow classmate because he has cleared the exams in the june and july exam okay. schedule so he just told me like uh, go for uh, 150 and above in total okay. but from uh, by giving my master exams i realized that you know anything can happen you cannot actually predict what is a safe number for you mm-hmm. so i remember that i solved every question i gave because there is no negative marking it's a very mm-hmm. po- positive side that right. there is no negative marking so there is no external pressure on you for answering the question right. so i i just left one question i guess i answered all of them for ugc net it's a very safe site to answer mm-hmm. all the question i would say right. but still you are uh, when you are answering a question that you have no knowledge uh, i would say take two points first of all the time you do not have to devote extra extra time for the question you have zero knowledge on just randomly pick any uh, option secondly if you know 50% of the question try to you know uh, give a smart guess like what could be the answer by eliminating not right. by you know going to the theory and the process by elimination i would say it's a very good technique to use for ugc net so right got it yeah i think elimination works a lot of time yeah. in in the mcqs um just one last question neha i have for you so uh, many students are not clear as to how uh, you know for example few of my students they cleared net but they were not qualified for grf so people don't understand the importance of qualifying both versus just qualifying net so if you could just clarify that for students why should they be aiming to clear both the things together okay so i would say that if you have a strong inclination towards you know 
joining a uh, an organization where you can teach where you can you know pursue your phd and if you have like i would say grf is a very safe option to play because in case there is another downfall or recession anything else you are not able to get a job grf promises you an opportunity to go for a phd and along yeah. with that some financial allowance is also given so if you have like 50 to 70% of chances is that that you want to do a phd so you should aim for getting a relatively higher score i would say but even if you just qualify for assistant professor i would say it's a almost the same thing so you should not get dejected but you should take it as a positive sign that still you can you know apply for assistant professor and teach in various colleges of india and then if you are very fixated on clearing grf uh, i think in the next round you can also give the paper again hmm exactly it, it depends upon what the student actually wants to do to do exactly and i think grf also kind of promises you that at least you will get some stipend right. when yeah. you go ahead and do phd so that that's a positive part right yes okay uh, so neha thank you so much for sharing your strategy and i hope that this is going to be useful for the students who are going to go ahead and give their next attempt in june thank you for your time thank okay. you so much for inviting me thank you neha bye thank you